Wow. I guess I'm actually just already streaming. <laughs> I thought I should have to push start stream, but I guess uh, they did it for me. <laughs> I'm horrible at this. Um, so if this is the kind of uh, video you would click on to see a whole bunch of uh, insults about Anita Sarkeesian, uh, this is not your video. You know, I don't want to be clickbait. This is actually more of a, uh, a rebuking of academia. Um, Anita Sarkeesian was just uh, one stop on this little strange uh, path I've, I've been going on through uh, just literary journals and uh, academic journals and just, you know, it, it's a part of my past that I was critical of Anita Sarkeesian and uh, certain movements in the past, but, uh, you know, I think we're all over that part. Right now, her name is just the strange thing that's tying all this together for a moment. I think uh, in about a week, I'll be on to uh, the word Joe Biden, and uh, we'll see where that goes. Um, it'll probably be a lot more timely. But anyways, uh, I've had a lot of nice interactions with other YouTubers behind the scenes in the last 24 hours. And uh, I was thinking um, about recapping a lot of that. But uh, suffice it to say, uh, I learned uh, a lot about YouTubers I used to watch that I never want to watch again. And... Uh, went down uh, nostalgia lane. And uh, that's not what this is about. This is just about critiquing academia and the strange things that they like to talk about. So um, this started with uh, Thunderfoot having two academic journals mentioning him by uh, username. Then it went on to uh, Anita Sarkeesian having uh, 252 articles mentioning her name, which she used as, as uh, her public persona. Now, Thunderfoot also has academic journals that he is uh, published in that uh, he used his real name in, uh, but... We're talking about YouTubers in general um, that I was looking up at the time. And then, I, uh, because the chat uh, was curious, I looked up Sargon of Akkad and then uh, filtered for uh, the word YouTube also being in the uh, journal article because Sargon of Akkad is actually a real historical figure. So I had to uh, screen for that and add YouTube to the mix. And he only had 10 articles written about him. Now, what's strange about that, it, that came up in some of the uh, discussions we've had, is that uh, Anita Sarkeesian has largely lost a lot of the success that she had as far as fundraising, and uh, her view counts really don't reflect all of the shit that she went through uh, in the past decade. Whereas uh, Carl Benjamin, uh, Sargon of Akkad, he has uh, amassed a little uh, nest egg of subscribers and followers that are voraciously supportive of him to where when he got kicked off of Patreon in December of 2018, he was making $12,000 a month from his Patreon patrons. But I just looked at his uh, alternative place of uh, patronage on Subscribestar and added up 
all of the different tiers that he has uh, published right there. And it actually turns out that he's now making per month uh, sixteen thousand nine hundred fifty-two dollars as of uh, April fifteenth. And uh, I would say near seventeen thousand dollars is uh, pretty good for being somebody who just you know makes YouTube videos critiquing other things and doing political commentary, um, and you know good on him for uh, finding a way to uh, be active in politics and also keep his uh, platform from YouTube. Um, as of, uh, I think, four months ago, he, did, he hasn't uh, posted a video to his main channel, but he has still been as prolific since losing his bid to become an MP uh, if you look at the channel, uh, what was it? A cod speaks. I don't know. Um, he's, he's got a live channel anyways, and, and he posts almost daily. Um, so, uh, hi Badger in the, in the chat. Um, I'm just going to go through these, uh, quickly without doing a discussion because, I actually kind of want to uh, burn through this subject and get on to the next ones. So, um, see now, Badger says, "Oh, but 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 Sargon's no longer uh, involved in politics." Uh, I just watched a video today of him saying that uh, Bernie Sanders dropped out because he's a loser who loses, you know, in in places where you can lose things. Loser, loser. Um, so, you know, he still does political commentary. And so, uh, I don't know that that was ever uh, his breadwinner. I don't think that any of the uh, Patreon donors that he has really got there through uh, his being in politics. I think probably uh, he was successful as much as he was in politics because of his... Uh, YouTube audience, you know, it, it, he didn't get much of a boost from uh, going to politics. In fact, I think it was the uh, the bane of his main channel, in a way, because uh, he made like 43 videos in a month, 10 months ago, and then it kind of just, you know, petered off into the point where his main channel, he hasn't made a video in like four months. So, I think, uh, I can't speak for the guy's intentions and motives, but, uh, it does seem to coincide with that giant public loss that he took, the big L, you know. Anyways, not here to judge or insult other YouTubers, just looking at the absurdity of how they get mentioned in academia. You know, because what I'm reading in academia, academia sometimes doesn't even really line up with how we all experienced this on YouTube as YouTubers. You know, the the day to day uh, daily updates on the drama that was happening between uh, the shit lords of the SJWs. It it just uh, it doesn't play out that way in academia as well. Um, it seems like just a few landmark happenings in the drama defined the whole drama for people in academia. So let's get to what we're going to cover today, and we're not going to get through all of it, but uh, we'll get through a good chunk of all of the articles that have been written mentioning Anita Sarkeesian. All right, so in this first one that I'm going to uh, bring to you guys' attention, um, <clears throat> the the journal article is, is called uh, Nurturing Voyeurism 
vibrant sexism and violence, why we can't yet afford to forget about Wild at Heart. So Wild at Heart is a video game that was mentioned in uh, Anita Sarkeesian's Damsel in Distress video. And uh, when this author is writing... I think the perspective that's being taken here, because it's in the Priscilla Papers, is where this is sourced. Um, this is a Christian critic of uh, pop culture, right? And so uh, after this paragraph where Anita Sarkeesian's uh, take on things, uh, especially Wild at Heart, um, is if you look at this next paragraph, it says, from a Christian perspective, however, one might wonder whether criticizing this trope undercuts the biblical metaphor of the church as the bride of Christ. And when I read that, I was like, wow, that's a pretty good take on this, because uh, if any of you don't know this, Anita Sarkeesian has actually uh, publicly said that she's uh, an atheist. She doesn't now put that in the forefront. She's a feminist first, right? And uh, she hardly mentions it, but um, a lot of feminists are atheists who no longer fight for uh, religious freedom. They no longer fight for the normalization of atheism, and it's because there was a a, a big war within atheism, a schism, where uh, you had the feminists and the social justice warriors split apart from uh, the shitlords and the uh, new skeptics. And uh, I think that was pretty much illustrated the most by Atheism Plus. But when, when I read this sentence uh, from this Christian... Uh, academic. Um, I, I was thinking, you know what, guy, you're right. Anita Sarkeesian might have been a really great uh, defender of religious liberties for atheists if we hadn't uh, pissed her off. Um, so yeah, this guy right here, this Phil Duncan, uh, he goes to an evangelical Presbyterian church in Lawrence, Kansas. And that needs to be in his bio. Um, and uh, that's the perspective he was writing about her with. Um, I thought that was pretty interesting. You know? Next study I'm going to share with you guys. Um, it's called, I'm Allowed to Be Angry. Students Resist Post-Feminist Education in... Aotearoa, New Zealand. I have no idea how to say that word, that word, but apparently it's the name uh, of a city in New Zealand, and uh, I don't know. It's, it explains a lot about their uh, their accents. Um, anyways, it's about this uh, club at uh, Wellington East Girls College uh, called Feminist after, you know, East Girls College, and uh, how they, uh, knowing about what happened to Anita Sarkeesian, rejected post-feminist uh, education because of what they learned, because of uh, pop culture stuff. And uh, really, what, what Anita Sarkeesian and Laura Bates, who I don't know who she is, what they're known for in this is that uh, they had rape and death threats. And that they had to deal with it. Um, it it's not really uh, all-inclusive of the Sarkeesian story, uh, but that the students there knew about it and it affected their politics. And so, you know, it's a good read, but, uh, I think that you could probably get away with 
not having to mention Anita Sarkeesian in this. I don't know how big of a, a point it was to make uh, that the students knew about her and uh, a couple of other stories. But, you know, next we have, uh, this is a article on the discrimination claims and uh, the charge of bad faith, right? Uh, playing with cards. This article is by uh, David Schraub. And when, when the title says playing with cards, uh, I think the, the best way to think about that is when someone plays the race card or the sexism card. Right. So, uh, what it's trying to say in this uh, article, which is not uh, a scientific study, by the way, there's no uh, process to it. It's just uh, social theory. Um, what they're trying to say is. When you say that Anita Sarkeesian is playing the sexism card, you then don't have to address what she's saying is sexist. You can just, you know, dismiss it away. And so there was this other guy named Ryan Carroll who asserted that uh, any claim of sexism is merely an I win button and a way to shut down opposing viewpoints. Um, he's saying that if she calls it sexist, then she automatically wins everything. So we can't uh, pay attention to what she's saying. When, you know, he's not actually investigating what she's calling sexist. So, uh, let's see. Next study that we're going to look at is uh, Gamer Girls, Gold Farmers, and Activism in Real Life by Megan Musgrave. This is in uh, the Crossmark Journal of Children's Literature and Education. And Sarkeesian is referenced ten times in this. But uh, basically, this is, this is the, the big... Uh, thing that Sarkeesian is just known for in all of these articles is uh, that she had a death threat at Ut for, for her speaking at Utah State University, right? Um, pretty much the majority of these articles know that about Anita Sarkeesian. That one moment is why half of these articles mention her, right? Um, and half of those things that say Sarkeesian are actually in the footnotes. But what you're going to see in some of these uh, articles, if you follow the same breadcrumbs that I'm showing you, is that... Uh, when people write about that Ohio State speaking engagement that uh, never happened because of the uh, death threats, it's almost like they're plagiarizing each other. It's almost like cut and paste the same facts about that one thing and, and no other take on it to the point where uh, after I read about it, you know, the tenth time, I'm like, wait a second. This looks suspiciously like the last journal article that I just read, you know. So uh, this one's called the uh, uh, "What Is the True A True Gamer?" The male gamer stereotype and the marginalization of women in video game culture. Um, I don't fault these people for citing in these in need Sarkeesian. What bit? One bit if. Uh, that's the uh, the focus of their study. Um, this is from the uh, Sex Roles Journal of Crossmark. Uh, again, Anita Sarkeesian is uh, known for Gamergate harassment. Uh, 
Um, and pretty much a whole bunch of her work is cited in the uh, references, which is kind of strange to me that, like, Anita Sarkeesian's videos on YouTube are cited to uh, hold up the, the facts in a journal article. And as well, here's uh, Thunderfoot and the Amazing Atheist uh, because they are, their videos about Anita Sarkeesian are actually referenced in there. Um, the next article... This one I thought was funny because there's this uh, this trend in naming journal articles and uh, in naming public speeches like at conventions the the strangest way you can possibly name them in order to get more people to show up to your speech or more people to read your journal article you you make this crazy sounding uh, it's not clickbait, because it, it's a, uh, you know, it's 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 usually just like crazy style in the title that people are are going for. So uh, this one is I'm Batman, and you can be too. Gender and constrictive play in the Arkham game series, right? And uh, you'll notice that the superhero that they have. Uh, for the Cinema Journal uh, right here. It's actually a half-male, half-female uh, looking, kind of androgynous superhero. I noticed that. You know, it's good artwork for the point of the journal article. So, uh... Anita Sarkeesian is met, mentioned for her Damsel in Distress Part 1 Tropes vs. Women uh, video, uh, but like, actually not mentioned anywhere in the actual article, just as a uh, footnote. So, you know, I just looked up every... Uh, our, article that was uh, an ac in an academic journal that mentioned her, and sometimes uh, the mentions actually are just in the uh, HTML address of something, and they're actually not even trying to refer to Sarkeesian, but, you know, she's, she's mentioned as far as she's in the, the hyperlink, the URL to the story. Um, so this one is eSport or the disembodiment of sports. A threat to PE classes? <laughs> and this is in the journal, uh, uh, the International Journal of Physical Education. Right, and this was just last year. This is not even a year old. This this one right here, and uh, Sarkeesian is mentioned once in a section about ethical issues, violent violence, harassment, and cyber mobbing. Right, um, but this is just naming a whole bunch of uh, health risks of gaming and uh, why we don't want to turn uh, video games into esports. So the next uh, paragraph is about the health risks and uh, gaming disorder. Um, and the next one is uh, sport or not sport. It's basically a giant uh, argument against making esports uh, equivalent to real sports. Like, we shouldn't be uh, creating esports teams on universities. You know, uh, next journal article, this one is called uh, Addressing Cyber Harassment, an Overview of Hate Crimes in Cyberspace. This one, I completely understand. Uh, I understand them bringing up Anita Sarkeesian. What 
what gives me pause is that it's in the Harvard Journal of Law and Technology of the Internet, right? So th this is stuff that could actually make, uh, you know, policy later on. Anyways, um, it talks about Anita Sarkeesian and uh, how just a week after she started her Kickstarter for her uh, video series, for her documentary series, she started re receiving online hate, right? But what, what stood out to me in this article was this was the first time in all of these articles that I read that there was a video game that was online called Beat Up Anita Sarkeesian. And apparently you'd go to a website and you would keep on pushing keys on your keyboard. It didn't matter what keys you pushed. And she would get more and more bruises on her face, right? In the moment, in this past decade, I was not aware of this video game being out there or that it was a big part of the narrative of the Anita Sarkeesian story, right? So the fact that it's a big deal in this law review journal, it, it's kind of strange to me. Um, so yeah, this uh, video game, it said each time the, the player touched the keyboard, a depiction of Sarkeesian's face grew more bloodied and swollen. And just the fact that she's being mentioned as part of the reason why we need better laws against cyber harassment should tell everybody, hey, give it a rest, or else we're going to have less freedoms on the internet because you decided to waste all of the uh, freedoms on harassing Anita Sarkeesian. Now we're going to need new laws, you know. All right, uh, the next one has a very interesting title to it. Rebalancing the Triforce, Gender Representation and the Androgynous Masculinity uh, in the Legend of Zelda series. Now, I will agree that uh, Link in the Legend of Zelda series uh, does look androgynous and kind of like Peter Pan. You know, um, that's what he looks like to me. And Peter Pan often is played by girls in plays. And so, uh, yeah, I can see that. Um, but Sarkeesian, she's mentioned uh, for uh, a part of one of her videos where she's talking about um, Link and how he has to rescue an incapacitated and victimized Princess Zelda in every game, right? This article is mentioning Sarkeesian, I feel, uh, in a way that, like, they this, this is a, a, a good version of, of all these articles that mention her. Like, this is the, the best case where actually what she was trying to do gets referenced, right? It's not about the harassment or the uh, Ohio State, sorry, the Utah State incident or, like, the death threats or the video game where she was getting beat up. Um, it's about what she was actually, like, this is actually referencing her... Uh, criticism work, her, her literary criticism work as, as a social critic. Like this, this one place, this is good, okay? Uh, unfortunately, the other two mentions of Sarkeesian in this, or sorry, there's only two name drops in, in the actual article and uh, one reference to the YouTube video. But uh, next article is uh, Blurring the Boundaries, Using Gamergate to Examine Real 
and symbolic violence against women in contemporary gaming culture. Not a study, mind you, just uh, social commentary in an academic journal. And uh, there's 12 references to Sarkeesian. And uh, the first one, like from the first, you can see how uh, it's basically about uh, Gamergate, Zoe Quinn, Anita Sarkeesian, and Brandon Wu. Um, she was targeted, and here it is. The Utah State University incident of October 2014, right there. They go into talking about that. Um, if Anita Sarkeesian is known for that, rather than what she actually was trying to say in her videos, then I would say that maybe she hasn't been the, uh, the author of her own narrative. You know, her, her, what's happened to her is more important than what she was doing in her work. So, I don't like this article so much. Um... Anyways, it, it, it tells the Utah State incident uh, in a little bit more detail than other articles. Uh, next article, um, this is on the publishing methods of our time, mobilizing knowledge in game studies. Which is a boring title, really. I, w I would not read this if I was reading for my own uh, entertainment and not having this overarching uh, theme to my, my reading. So, uh, the part that I thought was interesting here, um, <clears throat> and I'll read this. because people need to hear this. This guy's saying, in respect to England's comments, it's worth recognizing that Sarkeesian has done more to establish the relevancy of game scholarship outside of academia than any other game scholar, in part because her content was published in an accessible, intelligible format that has made scholarly research relevant to academic and non-academic audiences alike. So, fuck you, Matt Pat. Anita Sarkeesian's where it's at. Um, this one, uh, this journal is uh, in News and Views for the uh, journal Feminist Studies. The article's called Gender Trolling Misogyny adapts to new media, and uh, Sarkeesian's mentioned here in this section uh, about online and video gaming community harassment, and it's uh, basically talking about threats of rape, violence, sex assault, and death. Uh, they made pornographic images of her being raped and sent them to her. Her Wikipedia page was vandalized with pornographic engine images. Uh, the gender trolls reported her to Kickstarter and YouTube. Like, this is what this article is uh, saying is important about Anita Sarkeesian versus, you know, her actual body of work. And, and again, they mention they even created an online game beat up Anita Sarkeesian, where players could virtually beat up and punch her, watching her image become bloodied and bruised as a result. Right? I'm telling you guys, like, for, for the number of articles I have read so far about Anita Sarkeesian, and all of them bringing up that fact that I didn't know before this, I, I'm just like, are they all kind of taking from the same sources and a little bit too close to those sources and not really like investigating the whole story anyways um, this one is 
Symbiosis of Misogyny and Violent Extremism. New Understandings and Policy Implications. What I thought was interesting about this one is Anita Sarkeesian is a footnote to give this other uh, author, um, Melissa McEwen, more credibility because Melissa McEwen had been writing about what happened to Anita Sarkeesian. So basically, the whole reason why uh, this article popped up on my radar was because Sarkeesian's being used as a footnote to give some other author credibility. And if you were going to put uh, different words into uh, the word salad that somebody might search for uh, drama that happened over the past decade, I would think that Sarkeesian would be a good thing to add. As, as just a word that you could fit somewhere in the meta text somewhere so that people would view your uh, article. Next we've got, uh, this one is Tolerance as an Imperative for Higher Education and Democracy. Um, this is the South African Journal of Higher Education. That she's in. So, not, like, not just academic journals that happen on the continent of, of North America or the continent of Europe. Um, this one is from Africa, South Africa. <laughs> she's like, she's everywhere. Um, and then again, what she's known for in this article. In 2014, Anita Sarkeesian, a feminist writer, cancels a speech at Utah State University after receiving death threats. You know? But uh, what I thought was interesting about this article versus the others is it's talking about how Sarkeesian uh, viewed this lack of tolerance, lack of openness to different ideas as seriously failing of as a serious failing of higher education. And what I've seen in the uh, YouTube videos of say Sargon of Akkad or Jordan Peterson or Undoomed or any number of people who have been uh, prominent shitlords in the past decade uh, raking up the Patreon bucks, they all point to the deplatforming of shitlords that have the opposing view. So here's Anita Sarkeesian saying, wait a second, me not being able to speak at Utah State University, it's me being uh, deplatformed. This shows a lack of tolerance, a lack of openness to different ideas. And yet, uh, her detractors uh, spent numerous numerous years uh, worth of uh, content you know on their channels showing how uh, their side of things was also being deplatformed you know so you don't have one side saying you know we should have equality and, and uh, you know a round table where everyone's supposed to be welcome to speak so much as you have two sides complaining that we're being deplatformed. Next article. This one talks about uh, Anita Sarkeesian um, being doxxed, right? But in a, in a strange way, it uh, it references how some doxings are okay, and in order to do that, it's talking about uh, 
the Manning release and the Edward Snowden releases, um, that those uh, releases of information that actually did have uh, a little bit of uh, people's physical addresses and whatnot, physical locations, those were okay, uh, but what happened to Anita Sarkeesian was not. And this is in the uh, contestation on Reddit, Gamergate, and movement barriers. Uh, in the Jer Rutledge Journal uh, Social Movement Studies. This article here is called The uh, the New Governors, The People, Rules, and Processes Governing Online Speech. And this is a good example of what I was talking about as far as uh, Sarkeesian, Sarkeesian word seeding. Because uh, if you look here, it's just a footnote, again, and uh, that's it. You know, it's not really using any of her work. It's saying that she was uh, targeted uh, in in the gaming industry, just like Zoe Quinn and Brianna Wu, right? With har harassment on multiple platforms. It's not talking about her actual work. Do do Anyways. Next article, uh, let's see. Your daughter is in another castle. Essential paternal masculinity in video games. Now this one, you'd figure, uh, should have Sarkeesian featured prominently in it because Sarkeesian actually did talk about Super Mario Brothers in her actual body of work in her videos on YouTube. And instead, it's uh, for inf more information on harassment of Sarkeesian and the Gamergate controversy See this uh, book by uh, Eliana Dockerman, sorry, this article. Uh, what is hashtag Gamergate and why are women being threatened about video games? And that was an article in Time. So <clears throat> this, this article that could have very easily talked about what Anita Sarkeesian said about Super Mario Brothers and the Princess only uses Sarkeesian in a footnote to talk about the harassment that happened to Sarkeesian. This, they missed a, uh, an opportunity there to actually get a good intertextual reference for Sarkeesian rather than just dropping her name in the footnote to get me to fucking look at the article. <sighs> Next one. Uh... It's again talking about Anita Sarkeesian and uh, the Gamergate controversy and, you know, graphic rape and death threats. Um, and an online game portrayed her being beat to, beaten to a pulp, right? And so this is in the uh, article Assessing Online Misogyny Perspectives from Sociology and Feminist Media Studies. Um, and this was three years ago. Uh, it was written, and two years ago it was accepted into the Wiley Journal of Sociology Compass. Next we have, uh, this is Ronnie Millie Leela, Women's History for Games, A Manifesto and a Way Forward, right? And you look at uh, where does Sarkeesian show up, if, if Sarkeesian is going to show up in search results and, and make this article pop up. Actually, just the URL for a New York Times article. Right? That was it. Same thing with this one. Just one mention of Sarkeesian. It's in that same New York Times article. In the URL is her name embedded. Right, so this one, uh, playing with feelings, video game, of, video games and affect. Sorry, video games and affect. That's, that's different. Um, there was no reason to have that link in there, uh, saying Sarkeesian, Sarkeesian's name. Uh, I know it's probably the New York Times' fault. You know, but what that's doing is it's making a whole bunch of uh, p 
people's points that don't have to do with uh, that meta story of uh, Sarkeesian being harassed. You know, it's making a whole bunch of their articles being uh, be associated with that. You know, if the New York Times would just number their uh, URLs rather than put words in the URLs, then maybe we wouldn't have these uh, these word tag problems when I'm searching for articles that actually mention Sarkeesian on the merits, you know, and, and talk about what her actual body of work is. All right. Um, this is uh, from the Crossmark uh, journal called The Archives of Sexual Behavior. And uh, it's called Coping and Sexual Harassment, How, to, How Victims Cope Across Multiple Platform Settings. Right? So, uh, if we look at the place where Sarkeesian is mentioned, it says that... Uh, Sarkeesian popularized the term cybermob to refer to a group of people who collectively harass, manipulate, or threaten another person using mob mentality as a means of holding that person accountable for some real or imagined gaffe. Right? So, uh, yeah, just like uh, Al Gore invented the internet. Sarkeesian invented Cybermob, or at least popularized it to the point where she is, uh, she is to credit for the popular usage of it. Mm -hmm. Additionally, uh, doxing the word. That's that's also been popularized because of her. Okay, moving on. Um, We've got this article here, Online Harassment, a Legislative Solution, right? Again, I want, I want to uh, highlight this, a legislative solution, right? Where is this? That this is, uh, that this is in an article. This is in the Harvard Journal on Legislation. This could actually, you know, really affect laws in the future. And this was uh, 2017, you know, May. But th this is a really well written out treatise on things. And uh, Sarkeesian's name pops up in da -da -da -da, an article that is referenced. By it. It's actually not in the actual meat and potatoes, so <sighs> breath of relief. But um, next we have this is an article called Roundtable Remix, or sorry, Roundtable Remix and Videographic Criticism, and it's actually a conversation between these people that was moderated by these people, put into print form from probably uh, a transcribing of the conversation, right? But what stands out to me is this name right here. This is Jonathan McIntosh. And from the, the drama as it played out, and I watched it on other people's YouTube channels, Jonathan McIntosh is basically the Titanic Sinclair to Anita Sarkeesian's poppy. Like, he was the uh, originator of, of the idea of her success. You know, he is the one who uh, brought the underpinnings of philosophy to feminist frequency uh, in the early formative years with Anita Sarkeesian. So he, he knew, knew her personally, right? And of course, in the conversation, which uh, happened in 2017, 
it's Jonathan McIntosh that's the one that that brought up Sarkeesian at all into the conversation. And he said, I worked as a producer and co-writer on season one of Anita Sarkeesian's Tropes vs. Women in video games web series. Uh, I'm now currently producing my own web series called The Pop Culture Detective Agency. You know, but he's basically only mentioning Sarkeesian to give his CV uh, in the discussion. Last, last one I'm going to go over, and I, I think, oh man, this video has been like 50 minutes long already. Uh, <laughs> and that's why I'm breezing so quickly through these, because there's a lot to get through, and I want to not spend too many videos on this. But this one right here is uh, in the Rutledge Journal Technical Communication Quarterly. This article is called From New Guides to Hashtag Op KKK Ethics of Anonymous's Tactical and Technical Communication. And uh, <clears throat> what I got from this one and their naming of Anita Sarkeesian, um, of course, they, they talked about uh, how she was doxxed and harassed by anti feminist. Gamer Gators, right? Yeah, that's that's what she needs to be known for. Instead of her own body of work, she needs to be known for that. There was this link to this article right here that I actually clicked on and read, and it was actually a very good article, I felt. Uh, it was like a behind-the-scenes uh, interview with Anita Sarkeesian, talking about what her mindset was like that people couldn't see in the public eye during that time. And it's not a place that I usually find the best as far as journalistic integrity, but it's on the Daily Beast. And the article's title is Anita Sarkeesian on Life After Gamergate. I want to be a human again. And this article was three years ago, and I and I didn't see it. Uh, I probably had already been burned out on Anita Sarkeesian as a topic. But uh, there are some very interesting quotes in here. You know, I I felt for Anita Sarkeesian in reading this, but there was one particular part that uh, th this one. I felt like this quote was just meant to take the collective penis of all the shitlords and slam it in the door. Because she says, In the same summer we had Ghostbusters, we had Suicide Squad. And then it says, Sarkeesian noted with a smile that, sh that she's pretty sure she never wants to see Suicide Squad. And I'm like, what? What? Are you saying Margot Robbie wasn't cute in Suicide Squad? You know, what are you saying? Is every depiction of Harley Quinn uh, some hypersexualized bad thing for uh, all of comic book uh, lore? What What are you trying to say with that smile that the that the article's writer picked up on. Where was this? I want to see this smile that said all this stuff. You know? Anyways. Um, it's a pretty good read. Um, all the way through. Uh, and uh, it ends with uh, you know, the patterns repeat. And that's why uh, she's got to be outspoken about all the harassment that she had. Just because um, it happens to other people, and she cares. So, yeah, I thought it was a good read. Um, but I'm going to end this video on that note. 
I do recommend you guys uh, read this article, and I will just throw it in the uh, in the chat because maybe if you've gotten this far in the video watching it on YouTube, uh, you'll want something else to uh, read to follow up. I do still have probably one more video on Anita Sarkeesian in uh, mentions in academic literature, but if it's, you know, if it's a whole bunch more about the Utah State incident and the uh, doxing and harassment and rape threats and all that, uh, I'm going to breeze by every article that says things like that just to get to the 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 few that have a different take on it because um, yeah, there's so many of them. <laughs> I I I'm just giving you guys a sample this far, thus far, but there are a few good ones, and then after that, I think I'm moving on to the uh, Joe Biden topic. Uh, 